Once again, once again, Friday night right here on RealLibertyMedia.com, February 7, 2020. Yes, it's Friday night, folks. Freaking ball time. Glad to have you all here along for the ride with us at the ball. Everybody ready? I think you are. If you're here, you're ready. If you're not here, well, you're not hearing me. <laughs> anyway, welcome uh, to everybody out there in the various places you may be tuned in from RealLibertyMedia.com right there on the Freakers Ball show page, or maybe you're listening on Vaughn.Live slash RealLibertyMedia. You could be tuned in on the audio stream over there on RLMRadio.xyz or on FreedomsNetwork.com, RealLiberty.org, Shoutcast. Internet radio, tune in. Oh, so many places. Yes, indeed. So, welcome to y'all out there, and welcome to y'all here in the chat room. If you're not here in the chat room, come on over, jump on into the chat room. We've got a great chat room over here on reallibertymedia.com, and uh, you can come on in here, talk to all the folks, discuss the stuff that we talk about during throughout the show. We, I say we, means me, Grimner, and uh, the Mighty Moose Girl, who will be calling in shortly. Oh, so shortly, and uh, we will be talking about stuff, all kinds of fun stuff, weird, wild stuff that this crazy world is made of. But let me say hi and howdy to the folks that are here in the chat room right now, the people that I see chatting anyway. I, I see we got the frumpy, the frumpsta, uh, 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 trying to promote Morris the Cat for president. Uh, <laughs> we got the moose girl and Meister Brow, sock puppet, uh, Rob Works still hanging around. Hey, Rob. How you doing? We got, uh, I know Miss Kate's out there listening. Hey, Kate, how you are? Uh, we got SLC Mike. Uh, who else? I got to look at that. Uh, scrolling up here a little bit. Meester, Meister, Mooster, uh, Brow. There's a whole bunch of other people in here, but uh, that's that's the ones I see currently actively chatting. So how do you all and how do you that are not here chatting live in the um, chat room? But, uh, yeah, I'm sure Moose Girl will be along momentarily. But let me remind everybody that is uh, tuned in, uh, and I'll remind you a little later on, because I know a lot of people don't get get here exactly at the beginning of the show, but I'll remind you right now, uh, this is February, and February is the donation drive month for RealLibertyMedia.com. So send your donations our way. If you go to the RealLibertyMedia.com home page there, uh, you'll, you'll see uh, a, a button, a big red button that says, Donate! Uh, I think that's what it says. I'm, I'm trying to remember. But anyway, I'm pretty sure that's what it says. Donate. If you click that button, uh, it'll pop up a little thing there, and you can send us some cash, some money, so that we can keep this show and all the other shows that come up on RLM Radio uh, going along uh, here on, on RealLibertyMedia.com. It's a good thing to do, you know, if you uh, like any of the stuff we do or Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you just maybe you like to chat. Maybe you're just a, a active chatter. Which the chat is free. We're not actually paying anything for the chat. That's provided free to us by irc.freenode.net. But uh, all the other stuff costs money. Uh, all our servers, uh, the, uh, the 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 web hosting, uh, uh, shoutcast hosting, uh, Spreaker stuff, which Grammy picks up the tab for that. Thank you so much, Grammy, for that. Every month she pitches in. And, and, and puts money there so that we have our Spreaker, Spreaker broadcasting going out. Um, all, just all kinds of different stuff costs cost various monies. And it's not that much, you know. We, we, we run about uh, 400 bucks a year total total cost for Real Liberty Media. And uh, we've, we've received one, one, a single donation so far came in last weekend. And, and thanks to you that donated that. And uh, anybody else that's got to be donating, happy, 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 happy for all of uh, that. Moose Girl has to take the dog outside to do his business because, well, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what happens when you got a dog. They always, they always need to do their business at the least convenient possible time. Uh, yeah, you know. So, what are you gonna do? Um, free knob, yeah, free knob, uh, free node, free knob, free knob, free, free, free everything. So, anyway, it's been kind of an interesting week. Not really so much with me. 
been kind of a, you know, just a standard week with me, nothing exciting going on. But uh, if you're one of those uh, uh, people that watches news and current events and things going on, a lot of stuff happening, man. Um, <laughs> and, and every time it's always just hilarious. Good night, Rob. And uh, you sleep well and uh, tell the wife I said, howdy, howdy, get that fish. All right. Um, all right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Okay. So, he, yeah, he caught a fish on his way out, that Rob Works guy. Sock puppet missed it. Darn. All right. Anyway, so um, let me tell you about all the shows that we have here on Real Liberty Media. In case those of you that may be unaware of our schedule, which you can access very easily there on reallibertymedia.com. Media, Real Annunciation was never my strong suit. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> on Saturday, you get the dark table with uh, Flash and Grammy. Uh, it's an interesting show. It comes on at 2 p.m. Eastern every Saturday. Then on Sunday morning or Sunday noon for you Easterners, uh, I'm, I'm in mountain time, so I'm, I'm, it's, it's morning for me. Uh, so, yeah, on Sunday, I play, I, I, I kick the blues in there about quarter to, uh, quarter to 12 for y'all. And, uh, and I played blues for like three hours there. We played trivia here in the chat. It's a good old time, man. It's fun. It's fun stuff. Uh, and following up me is Mr. Hal Anthony. He does a show that you may have heard of before. It's called Behind the Woodshed. And uh, he, he talks about all kinds of cool and interesting stuff. Just just fun, you know. And then on uh, Monday evening, I come back on uh, for another show called Grim Leftovers, where I cover stories that uh, I had planned to do on this show, on Freakers Ball, and never got around to. So I do that every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. And then on Tuesday, Flash comes back once again and does his show uh, called In a Perfect World, and that's usually with Grammy as well. Um, Rob Rob Works, co- uh, I think uh, last week, and Rob Works uh, co-hosted with Flash on the Dork Table, but uh, uh, Grammy's his normal co-host for... Uh, the dork table and for in a perfect world uh, so that's cool and then on wednesday on wednesday morning uh noon eastern uh again uh, i'm mountain time so it's morning for me uh is uh lonnie clark uh, with her show age of fission and if you didn't hear this this week's uh, age of fission show man check out the podcast we got podcasts up there on really media for years and years worth of podcasts hundreds hundreds thousands of hours worth of podcasts are up there for you all to listen to at no cost whatsoever. Uh, and then on Thursday, uh, Thursday evening at uh, 11 p.m. Eastern is Prince, Zippix, and Rotten Socks with a show they call Power Hour. And they cover a lot of crypto stuff, but they also cover some other interesting stuff. So check them out. And then it rolls back around to Friday and us again. So, uh, uh, yeah, again, just a reminder that uh, February, we, we, we need... We need uh, donations coming our way, rolling in our way. So, uh, please, thank you. Moose Girl? Yes, hello. Hi, Hi how are you doing? I'm all right, how are you? Yeah, oh, there's Cowboy Tech, he's not late. All right. Cowboy Tech, in the house. In the Freaka house. Freaka, Freaka In the ball. Freaka house. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So uh, you got you got Marty. I mean, not Marty. Uh, Jackson. Uh, Jackson. I'll take you care yep. of. <laughs> Sorry, I still. That's think okay. It. That's all right. Uh, I, still, I, still, I still think about Marty all the time. Yeah, he was a good pooch. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Yep. Moose's old dog, Marty. For those of you yep. that don't know. Yeah. The previous Jack Russell. <laughs> yeah, the one before this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, the one thing I can say about Jack Russells is they are super freaking smart. That's what all I hear. All dogs are smart. All dogs are smart, but there's some that aren't as smart as others. And I'm just telling you, a Jack Russell dog, they're freaking smart. Uh, that's like what, they're that's... so smart, dude. Uh, that, that's what I've been hearing about them. Is they are. They are. They're just like brainiacs. I mean, the 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 the, the dog. He. 
I don't know how to explain it, but he's just fucking smart. So, you know, he can predict what you're going to do. You know, like if yeah. you're trying to trick him or something, it uh. takes a lot to trick this dog. <laughs> like, you'll, uh, you'll say treat. And unless he knows you have a treat in your hand or whatever, right. he, he came and stood right by me just now. <laughs> anyway, um, hi, Jack. Anyway, um, he he won't he won't come to you unless he knows for sure that you you know you can't trick treat him. You know what I mean? Uh, what well, what about what about the uh, fake tennis ball throw trick? That doesn't work either. Ah, okay. No, no, he's he's on to that one. <laughs> he just waits till it actually gets thrown. Yeah. But uh no, he he's he's all right. He's smart. Go lay down now. Yeah, you you go lay down now. You gotta go lay down. He says you're talking about me. <laughs> he's looking at me like you said the word, the T word, mom. <laughs> like why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just looking at me like, well, okay, you said what? the word. Hand it over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. But yeah, he is he's a smart dog. But Yeah. Um great. Yeah. So So that's good, that's good. So uh yep. anything uh new or interesting in Eau Claire this week? No, not really. And um I won the fifty dollar bonus this week. You won it? Yeah. Like once a month they draw a name randomly. Uh huh. And my name got selected, and they have this wheel that you spin. It's just this little wheel, little yeah. prize wheel thing. All right. And they have all these different prizes on there. I won fifty dollars cash. Great. Yeah, you know, right. hey, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the highest prize on there? A hundred bucks cash. Oh, nice. That's nice. And yeah, so, and then they have. Yep. So Go they ahead. draw they draw a name, and the person they draw gets to spin the wheel. Yes. Correct. Okay, cool. Yes. And it, I, my name was selected, so then I got to spin the wheel, and I won 50 bucks. Like, I was hoping for the 100 <laughs> Of course. <laughs> or the $75 to the restaurant of my choice. <laughs> and how, how many employees but, How many employees you got there? No, uh, there's like 20 of us. Oh, that's not bad. Pretty good odds. Yeah. yeah. No, it's small. Yeah. yeah. So you should So, you, yeah, pretty good odds. Yeah, you should hit that a couple times a year. Yeah, I would yeah. think so. Yeah. So awesome. Awesome. And you got yeah, the so, uh who is it tomorrow? The infamous string dusters. Oh, the dusters, yeah. Yeah. My boys. All right. My Falco and my Travis and my Jeremy and my Panda. <laughs> and Andy. Yes. Okay. The boys. The dusters. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And that, They're and playing that, right now. They're playing in Chicago tonight. Right. But see, for me, I wanted to go to Chicago, right? To see yeah. them. I'm like, I'll go to Chicago Friday, then I'll go to Appleton on Saturday. Well, anyway, for me to get to Chicago on a Friday, I'd have to take the day off of work for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's a six-hour drive. And then Chicago is like three and a half hours south of Appleton. <laughs> So it's just too much driving. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Then you know, like one is good. When, when you you're know? In, when you're in Chicago, you got to dodge bullets and stuff. You know, so yeah, they uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they shoot. They're playing in Minneapolis on Sunday night. They, they shoot a lot of people in Chicago. That's what I'm saying. They what? They shoot. A oh lot yeah, of you know, I it's, <laughs> do. I really want to be going to Chicago. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. I do like Chicago though. Don't get me wrong. I do like that town. Even though, you know, it's all this crap goes on there. I yeah. still like that town. Right. Well, that's got a lot of cool stuff in Chicago, you know that about that. Oh yeah, they got awesome museums, awesome uh restaurants, pizza, I mean hot dogs. Yeah, they got some pretty cool shit. They got Chinatown there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got, I mean, it's been years since I've been to Chicago, like actual in Chicago, you know what I mean, the town, the, right. the downtown area there. But, I mean, I'd go back. I'm not afraid. Like, you know, newsflash, you can get fucking shot anywhere. That's true. <laughs> I mean, 
Do your odds go up in Chicago? Maybe. But there's a lot of other fucking people in Chicago. I mean, unless you're, like, hanging down on the south side of Chicago, I think you're good. Right. You know, I mean, yeah, there's random drive-bys, but, you know, that can happen anywhere. Oh, absolutely. Really, it's like, I'm not going to not go to Chicago because of, I could get shot. Like, I could get shot going to Minneapolis, too, or St. Paul. It's like, you know. Right. It doesn't really matter where the fuck you go. You could get shot go walking along a path by some hunter in the woods. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That thinks you're a fucking deer. You know? Yeah. I mean, come on. You know? I mean, who no, knows? No, 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 Shit no. can happen anywhere, anytime. <laughs> you're right. So to be afraid and be, oh, no, Chicago, I could get shot. I mean, even like my my boss, like one of my bosses, he's from Chicago. He's like, the one he he was going there for a holiday or something. He's like, oh, Hope I don't get shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, it's kind of it's, everybody says no. Well, it's it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a big thing, you know. They have like a every every weekend, every weekend in Chicago is a shooting gallery. Well, uh, I know. You know, so right. <laughs> of course, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's in certain areas between right. certain people. Which and, they don't tell you this stuff. They don't say in this neighborhood that you know, like in Minneapolis, you know where the bad neighborhoods are. Right. I mean, you know that if you drive around these bad neighborhoods, you better lock your fucking door, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, seriously, it could be that bad in some parts of places, you know? Right. But um, I'm not that... I grew up in Minneapolis. It's a city. Is it as big as Chicago? No. But, dude, it's common fucking sense. I mean, and if you're randomly going to get shot, that could happen anywhere. <laughs> so, to be like, oh, I'm not going there, I could get shot. It's right. kind of crazy. right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. All right, let's uh, let's uh, hit some jams here. Yeah, let's do that, and yeah. uh, we will be back. We to will discuss other things. Oh, so many things, so many. Oh, there's things. always so many things going on. <laughs> like we we don't we never run out of material at the, on this show. We do not. All right, uh, enjoy all. We'll be back. You may find you yourself. Will. Uh huh. It's almost a full moon. It's coming up on uh, Monday. Sunday, Sunday. Don't you talk, no. Don't you talk, no. I don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't talk. Don't you talk to no strangers. They're, they're, they're. That's, that's good advice. Ronnie James Dio there from Alive in London, 2005. Don't talk to them strangers. All right, before that, we had Rare Earth and Get Ready kicking it off there with Talking Heads and Once in a Lifetime. Yeah, stay away from them strangers, you know. You don't, you don't know what they're up to. They, 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 they probably mean you, no, mean you no good. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> Moose Girl, you there? <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, so what do you think of that advice? Is that good advice? What? Don't talk to strangers. Yes, for the most part. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the context, probably, but for a general rule of thumb, probably not a good idea. Yeah. Especially if you're a little kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially. Yes. Let's see here. Do I have anything bookmarked that's cool and good to talk about? I do not know. Probably not. But All you never know. Right. I got I got a ton of stuff, but you know how All it right. is. I just want to start by saying I was fucking right. About? About the impeachment. Oh. Which, and I oh. wasn't the only one. No, I'm not no. I was the only one right, but I was correct in what would happen and how it would go down. And, yeah, exactly what I thought would happen happened. So yeah. It was a big waste of time. Of course. Of course. And... You know, while that was going on, there was a bunch of other shit going on that we weren't paying attention to. 
All right. So, so, so well, let, me, let, me, let me talk about one of one of the stupid ass things from this week. All right. Uh, because it, it 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 gets funnier. <laughs> it's funny enough. Really? It's funny enough to begin with, but it gets funnier. Yeah, you know they had that uh, caucus in Iowa. Yes, yes. They, oh my God! Okay. What a joke that was. All right, and then and and then they. Oh well, something's not working right. Our our systems are not getting the right numbers, and and we can't give you the numbers. And then the, the right, next, what the, a joke! The, and then the next day rolls around, and oh, here's some of the numbers. What do you need? Some of some of the numbers. What do you need? Some of the numbers. And then yeah, and, and, the then, and then there's all the reports. Oh, well, these these numbers that you're showing don't match what those people had over there. All these other numbers. Okay, oh okay, my God. all that. So it's, it was a whole clusterfuck. And then finally, I think it was uh, today, they came out and they said, "All right, uh, it, it was it was pretty much a dead heat between uh, Bernie and, and, and Sanders." And, and, yeah, yeah, and and and, 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 the, and, the, and, the, and they say, "Well, maybe that's not exactly right either." Uh, so so oh my God. we're, we're going to have to do a recall. Uh, I mean, a recount. And and apparently, this company that that generated this software it was uh, some Hillary Clinton company. Um, okay. Imagine that. Okay. So just, so just, just before the show started, I saw this story. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy hell. <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta be joking, but they're not joking. They're serious about this. Okay. They're dead serious about this story. Or at least this man woman is. <laughs> Rachel Maddow. Blames 4chan for shambles in Iowa. What? Oh, come on. <laughs> yes, indeed. Rachel Maddow blamed anonymous message board 4chan for the debacle in Iowa, claiming that a handful of calls clogged up the Iowa Democratic Party phone lines. The, the delay in reporting re, uh, in the results of Iowa caucus, 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 <laughs> What's going on there? Uh, was blamed on reporting issues related to an app called Shadow, which okay, you you're creating this Shadow app, huh? Uh, anyway, which is owned by the Buddha gig supporter Tara McGowan. So w one of the guys that Imagine had no that. well, one of the guys that had no chance of winning that wound up winning. Right, come on. Is, uh, <laughs> come on, Mal. All right. So, however, this did not stop Maddow from claiming that four channers were were to not. were to blame for calling Democratic Party phone lines to slow or to sow confusion, uh, despite it being acknowledged that this occurred after the problem with the app had been made public. Oh, yes, Matta was in top form, according to Chuck Ross. Uh, she claimed that the 4chan posts uh, urging people to clog up Iowa Democratic Party phone lines to uh, mess with Democrats' ability to carry out the caucus. Firstly, this was, the, the caucus was over at this point, and the Dems had to call in because their other tech failed um, <laughs> Ross, right. uh, Ross accused, they, well, we have paper. They're like, oh, we have paper to back all this data up. And yeah, like, no, you fucking don't. You, you have paper. No, but, you do not. But, you're not going to sit there and count some paper ballots. It's not. <laughs> no, that's no. Come on. Uh, anyway, Ross accused Maddow of in, engaging in pure disinformation in front of Thank an you. audience in front of an audience of millions. Which I think you're being generous. Uh, MSNBC does not have an audience of millions, but whatever. Um, she uh, made the bizarre claims despite her own colleagues at the network debunking 4chan's involvement earlier in the day. <laughs> so, <laughs> just be glad that Maddow didn't blame Russian bots for the shambles, as many on Twitter apparently did earlier this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a fucking clown show. <laughs> it is. I mean, I was like, I was right. I was like, going, coming out of the store or something the other day, and I saw that newspaper headline, 
Trump acquitted. I'm like, oh my, f I mean, I knew it already. I had known it before that, but it's just like, I was fucking right. What a fucking complete waste of fucking time. Yeah. You know, do I like Trump? No. Do I like any of them? No. Do I like Pelosi? Hell no. That woman's fucking batshit fucking psycho. Uh, obviously, I mean, yeah. You can tell. Look at her eyes. <laughs> Watch her eyes sometime. The girl, the, she's got like these eyes that are really bugged out of her fucking head. Oh, yeah. You know? Well, yeah. Oh, my God. The woman's nuts. You know, these people that are, are, are up there in, in power, in these positions of power, how old are they? Uh, ancient, ancient. They're all freaking ancient. They're 70. They're all freaking ancient. <laughs> They're so, fucking 70 or older. Yeah. You know, tell me they got the pulse on the fucking, they got their finger on the pulse of the American people. They fucking don't. They never fucking have. <laughs> Any politician that's got loaded with a lot of money, let's just say John Kerry, Joe Biden, Bill Clinton. Right? Paul yeah. Clinton had a lot of money. I don't fucking know. Uh, well, he was a lawyer or something, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. So these are all lawyers and shit. They make buku money, like money that none of us can fathom. And they, they want to get up there and tell you how they're going to fucking help you and they know what you're going through. And, oh, yeah, they care about you. And, they you know, it's like, fuck you, you don't. You don't fucking know a day in my goddamn life, cunt. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're going to sit up there and tell me that you know what's best for me and that you know what I'm going through and you can relate to me? Guess what? You can't relate to me. Right. You were born with a silver spoon in your goddamn mouth. <laughs> and you don't know what it's like to fucking live paycheck to paycheck. Uh, they're not a clue. Not you don't a clue. know what it's like to not be able to get a loan for a car or a house. Not a clue. You don't know what it's like. Yeah. Anyway, you, I, don't, not, I don't. You don't have your finger on the pulse of the American people. Anyway, I, I didn't. I didn't uh, save any uh, stories about the whole impeachment crap and the uh, acquittal you know, and, yeah. and that stuff. I, I, I you know, it's also. It's, it's such an obvious outcome. That's I, 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 I called the outcome two months ago. Yeah. yeah. When all this shit first started, I said, well, guess what? The, re the Senate is Republican control, and there's no control, and there's no way in hell they're going to vote the fucker out. He's uh, one of them. Yeah, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. None of it mattered. It was all just, so, just, a, just, a, just a ridiculous big ruse. Big waste of time. Yeah, it was a ruse. Um, it was a ruse to get everybody all up in arms, get all the people against each other, you know, keep the people divided because that keeps them easier to control. Yeah. That's a typical ta tactic that's been used since government was ever first in invented. Okay. Anywhere. Anyway, the uh, the uh, coronavirus thing is ongoing. Oh, God. And I came across this story earlier today. Okay. <laughs> One of, one of your favorite guys, speaking of the rich people that have no clue, Bill Gates and the World Economic Forum ran coronavirus outbreak simulation six weeks before the real outbreak. <laughs> in, the, in this report, this is posted on humansarefree.com uh, on uh, January 29th. Uh, in this re report, we take an inside look at Event 201, Event 201, which took place in New York City on October 18th, 2019. Event 201 is a high-level pandemic exercise hosted by the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security in partnership with the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Oh, he imagined that. <laughs> I mean, we've been doing this show, how I don't know, 13 freaking years. Yeah. And he's been one of our biggest, like, douchebags, like, yeah. that we've talked about. Yeah. He is the, he, he's evil incarnate. He's, like, so evil. Like, you can't even imagine. Like, you don't want to know how evil the dude is. Just it, know he's fucking evil. Okay. It says right here that... This is an extremely fascinating thing because this pandemic simulation exercise of coronavirus took place about six weeks 
before the first illness from the coronavirus was actually reported in Wuhan, China. One hell of a coincidence, if you believe in that sort of thing. Another fascinating connection is that not only did Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation participate in and help set up the pandemic simulation of the coronavirus outbreak, but they just so happen to fund the group who owns the patent to the deadly coronavirus. Imagine that. I mean, yeah, I saw these stories come out like two weeks ago. And they are already... It came out and no one paid attention. Everyone's still up in arms and like, oh, it was from animals at the fucking market yeah. in Wuhan. And, no, and it, not true. And, and it says here, and they're already working on a vaccine to solve the current crisis. They have the vaccine. They, yeah, they, they, they've they had the vaccine. Um, anyway, again, an incredible coincidence... Incredible. <laughs> uh, in, in this report, you will see footage. And there's, there's videos here if you want to, if you uh, people want to watch those later. In this report, you will see footage from inside the event from members of the Emergency Epidemic Board, which they have that yes. In this simulation, consisting of representatives from major banks, the United Nations, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Johnson and Johnson, logistical powerhouses, oh, oh, the media, as well as officials from China and America CDC, just to name a few. Uh, the simulation also includes news reports that were fabricated just for this exercise. Uh, oh please. my God! Of course, <laughs> that's what they do. Please. Fabricated. Please. You guys know what that means? Fabricated. Uh, Made up. A pl- fucking lie. Please keep in mind, uh, because they are eerily similar to reports we are currently seeing. Of course they uh, are. Re- regarding the real world coronavirus outbreak. Oh my uh, God! The original video is probably not going to be up for much longer, or at least. Uh, the comment section is going to be closed. Um, <laughs> so the guy print, uh, screen printed a bunch of the comments before uh, they're removed. Um, and, and it's just funny. You'll have to read through the comments. He's got a whole yeah. whole, whole long line of them here yourself uh, uh, for for you. But uh, um, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And then, okay, so I, the Super Bowl was Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday. Right? Yeah. Okay. Just going to touch on this a little bit. Right. Not going to dwell on it. Anyway, right. um, so what, I was making dinner. I was making a, a pork roast in the oven, you know, and I was doing all the fixing of all the dinner, the potatoes and the gravy and all that. Which, by the way, I nailed the gravy again. Awesome. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was almost a disaster, but I rescued it. I resurrected it. But anyway, okay, okay. Um, I didn't tell my kids that because they like the t- taste of the gravy. They like the gravy, so I don't have to tell them that part. Anyway, I hear in the background there's a commercial on during the Super Bowl, and I hear, I didn't see the commercial, but I heard the words, 5G will improve our lives. <laughs> You've never imagined. Or something to that regard, right? Yeah. I'm just thinking, Really? Really, people? 5G is fucking terrible. Right. People are going to die. All I could, the first thing that came to my mind was cancer rates will soar. Yeah. You know, people want their information and stuff, and they, they're so naive to think that, oh, well, if it's out there, it's got to be safe. They want to prove, approve something if it wasn't safe, right? Uh, uh, yeah. You're naive if you fucking think that. Right. You're very naive if you think that. <laughs> so don't be all up, but don't. I wouldn't be rushing out to get a 5G, people. You know, we're going to be bombarded with it no matter what because it's going to be all around us. Right. Like you said, what when we talked about it before, Graham. You know, it's all going to be all around you. Yeah. So the best thing you can do is just, you know, be as healthy as you can be. Absolutely. Um. Try to. Protect yourself with whatever substance or thing you have to protect yourself with. Right. Be it CBD, something. I don't know. Tin foil. <laughs> you know, wrap your house in aluminum foil. I don't know. Yeah. You know, do whatever. But this shit's coming down. It's here already. So, exactly. Uh, be on the lookout for a cancer rate soaring. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. 
Wonderful, but, huh? Uh, a little bit more from the uh, Bill Gates realm. Oh, great. Ew. I just got a, <laughs> I, I just got, I almost puked in my mouth like a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Anyway, my friend Christine, she, <laughs> my, my friend Christine calls up today and uh, she, she's like all upset. Uh, oh. her, because she, her computer, um, uh, you, you know, there's a thing when you press a little start uh, button on Windows 7, there's a little search thing there. Yes. Okay, and she uses that all the time to find documents on her computer because, well, she's terrible. Right, well, every, a lot of people do that. Yeah, because she, she's terrible at, at, at storage of files. And okay, all right, okay. Save, save stuff in all the weirdest places. So she, yeah. uses, she uses that search all the time. And so apparently this morning when, when uh, she went to uh, look something up, no files came up. She couldn't find any files. And so she uh -oh. called she she called me up. She was all freaked out. Oh, yeah. all, all my files gone. And I'm like, no, 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 settle down. Really, really. Just, okay. just settle down. Your, your files are not gone. Your computer. Sooner. Settle down. Your, your computer's up. Your computer's running. Your files are not gone. And so anyway, right. I, I, I any desk over to her machine. And uh, and, and sure enough, her, her, her search thing wasn't working. And uh, okay. so, so, I, so I bring up Double Commander. And uh, and I show her how she can search with that and find any of the files that she wants wherever. Right. Um, uh, and then I then I showed her how to and went through the steps to rebuild her search index uh, there on that. But even after that, it wasn't working. Um, and, and then she uh, after I, I just I let it go. You know, I I let her go off the phone there and the thing uh, while it was doing the, the index rebuild. And then a few minutes later, well, you know, whatever, twenty minutes later, yeah. uh, I get a call back. I can't shut my computer off. I get this message. What? I get. Oh my god! I, I, I get this message. You don't have permission to shut down this computer. Oh my god! So what was it? Well, a lot of people on Windows Seven are having this problem. Oh really? Yeah, and I don't really exactly uh -oh. exactly know what the issue was, but I searched that out and I found a lot of different answers as to how to fix it, and I got her fixed. Good. Um, <laughs> but, but if you're running Windows 7 and, and you're, you're coming up against uh, a save Did where, they say it was going to be outdated or something? Well, it, outdated or not, you should still be able to shut it down. Uh, it's well, like, yeah. It's like some permissions or policies got changed um, uh, uh, uh from something, and I don't know what it is, because I, I have two Windows 7 computers, and I don't have that problem on either of them. Um, Weird. But a lot of people are, are coming up against this issue. Cowboy Tech, you may be interested in this, because uh, you may be getting calls from people running Windows 7 saying, hey! Uh, What's going on? Yeah. Uh, so th this Reddit thread right there is, is one that uh, has some answers. Uh, anyway, what I did on hers... Um, was uh, I I, I uh, did uh, I run ran some updates on hers. Her um, update last update was in 2018, um, uh, and so I ran some updates on hers. And then I also found that uh, Adobe, uh, some certain services from Adobe, could uh -huh. be could be causing that issue. So I disabled all her Adobe services. Oh, okay. And then uh, after that, she was Still, able. Oh wow, that's fucked up. Uh, anyway, after, after running that those updates and and disabling the Adobe, she was able to shut down. Uh, the first thing I had her do was to create a new um, administrator account, then log out of her account and log in with a new account, and she was able to shut down that way. But she still wasn't able to shut down using her own account. So. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what's going on exactly. I don't have the answer. Um, there is a policy. Uh oh, he's got to upgrade tomorrow <coughs> from two win seven to win ten. Yeah, I don't know if I call that an upgrade, but it's a yeah. change. it's a change. Upgrade. Uh, it, it's well, it's it's whatever it is. Um, but yeah. uh, there there is a way you can go into the policy editor and, and, and change things if you're running professional. If you're if you're running win seven home, you're fucked. Um, oh, that might be the difference. Uh, and I think she is running Win7 Home. I didn't even really verify okay. that. But uh, um, there, there's various ways to, to cause it to uh, do, a, do a shutdown and a reboot. Um, but uh, and, and a lot, there's a lot of answers here uh, in, in that thread, in that Reddit thread that I posted there in the chat. It'll be in the, in the blog tomorrow. Um, so if uh, you come across this problem and you're, you know, 
one of my regulars, you, Moose, and others. Yes, me. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll help you out. <laughs> okay, thank but, you. Uh, but you know, uh, uh, it could be some dirty tricks. By I my... don't have Win Seven though. Oh, you don't have Seven anymore. No. Oh, okay. It's on my okay. other machine. Not not to worry then. Not to worry. Um, although, right. although, and let me and let me let me find this other article. Okay. Uh, oh shit. Okay. Uh, Great. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's something. Oh yeah, it came up earlier this week, and it's probably still not a problem. Uh, let's, let me find it here. Um, here it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> Windows 10 search function goes down, leaving users unable to look for apps or other files on their PC. Oh, now, shit. <laughs> apparently, apparently, and I didn't, I was unaware of this, but the, the search function on your Windows 10 machine, yeah, it goes through the cloud. You're search. You're not search. Oh, you're not. You're, you're, you're not searching locally on your machine. Oh, you're, okay. You're, you're you're searching across the freaking cloud, which means they see every search you do on your computer. Which awesome. I I I am not for that. Well, this is how they this is how they do this on Facebook. Like when I went to the Jeep place <laughs> the one time, and then all of a sudden I'm getting Jeep ads. Yeah. Anyway, it's you know, the, the, or if I search Jeep, or if I search Ford Edges, all of a sudden I'm getting Ford ads. All right. Anyway, it, it, just just you to know, let you know, it, it was it was a it was a limited thing that happened in Europe uh, for Windows 10 machines, and it was only it was well I say only it was down for several hours, which I'm caused I'm sure caused a lot of people to really freak out. Uh, people could not search their computers at all for, uh, well, at least using the Windows search. You still could if if you use uh, um, Total Commander or, or, or Double Commander. Um, Microsoft blamed the issue, of course, on somebody else with one of their network providers. So the widespread glitch with Windows 10 search feature left users across Europe unable to perform those search functions. Uh, the built-in search went down on Wednesday morning. Uh, which, wh- why are you going out to the cloud to search your local computer? Well, what the hell? Uh, I mean, right. that, that's hell? not that's not a benefit to you. It's a benefit to them, obviously, yeah. so that they know what you're what you're up to at every given moment. But uh, right. how the hell does that benefit the individual home user uh, or business user, for that matter? It does exactly. not. Uh, this, well, this this is a sneaky ass function. I don't know if there's a way to change that so you don't use the cloud on Windows 10 or not. I don't have a Windows 10 machine, uh, so I can, I couldn't answer that question for you without redoing some research. But uh, right. Um, <laughs> uh, you got seven still? Yeah, I got. Well, this okay. this machine and Barman's machine are still on seven. Okay. Um, uh, both of our, both these machines are set up for dual boot, but. Uh, but what are you running on your current? What? What is on your current machine? This, mach- this my main machine here, the one I'm using to the do Windows the sh- 7. do the show on is Windows Seven, right? Oh, okay. But I ha- I also have the uh, the, the Linux Mint uh, installed. Oh yeah, you have Linux. Yeah, yeah. Installed on an external drive, and Barman has it uh, set up on a per- partition on his. But um, until I need to, um, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's some some nice features in Windows Seven and. So I'm going yeah. to keep using yep. those, um, right. uh, you know, while, while I can, and uh, until until it until it says I can't use it anymore. Um, right. Yeah. So anyway, just letting you know, Windows besides trying to shove people window uh, Windows Seven, I mean Windows Ten, down people's throats because they don't want you. They they want you to right. They in. want you to be under their control. They uh, want to monitor you. They want to have control of you. Yeah. They they want to be able to spy you. Uh, on you and and so um <laughs> and they want you on Windows 10 which is a super spy OS um which uh, Mint you know you're safe with Mint uh and, and then they they they're trying to I don't know if this other issue with the Windows 7 computers um is a sneaky thing done by by Microsoft or not um like I said I have nobody's seems to have found the exact issue what caused all this Yet, but uh, a lot of people are having this problem. A lot of Windows 7 users are wow, having this problem. Uh, so, um, <laughs> uh, anyway, let's do, this, let's do some music here. Um, do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yesterday uh, would have been uh, Bob Marley's birthday. 
Uh, yes. But he he's passed away, of course, yep. uh, some years ago. R.I.P., baby. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, regardless of that, um, here you go. Some Bob for you. All right. Sweet. There's no end to the two of it <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> some fun stuff right there. The uh, <laughs> crazy guys from Steven Seagull covering Deep Purple's Burn. Uh, that that's just fun stuff. Let me tell you. Uh, before that, we had uh, the American Outlaws live at Nassau Coliseum back in 1990, doing Ghost Riders in the Sky. Willie and Johnny Cash. Yeah, and we kicked it off. Bob Marley Redemption Song. Happy birthday up there, wherever you are, Bob. Yeah, man, awesome dude. So, uh, oh, let's see, Moose Girl's taking a toke. Her, her timing is not really all that great, but, you know, that's all right. <laughs> oh, boy, so that, that's just that's just fun music. And howdy, Hansel. How the hell you doing there, brother? <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm back. All right, she is back. Toked up and ready to go. Toked up. You know it. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. So I found this meme. Okay. It's actually a quote. It was on Twitter or something. America needs or just needs a mom to be like, a new war? You got new war money? You never even finished the last two. We have plenty of war at home. <laughs> Right? Uh, yeah, that's a good like, one. What the fuck? That's a good one. No more war for you until you finish I others. Mean, we're, right. We're worried about all these other countries and places. And I know the reasons and I know all that. I don't want to get... But we have seriously a homeless problem here. We have a meth problem here. I mean, oh, yeah. we have a bunch of problems here. Like, yeah, a unli- zillion. Unlimited problems. Unlimited. So why are we causing problems in other countries? I mean... And dealing with their problems, like, you know, and, and I was talking with my son and the other day, and he was saying some stuff, I can't, you know, but then I said, he was talking about how something along the lines of the U.S. government just wants to, like, do what it wants to do. It's like, yeah, they have no diplomacy skills at all. <laughs> the U.S. has, does not, has no diplomacy skills at all. I'm like, that's why I like Ron Paul. Because he wanted to talk to these people, not just bomb the shit out of them. You know, I mean, but obviously Ron Paul, the establishment was not going to let him win, which they made sure that didn't happen. Absolutely. While the the convention was taking place, they enacted this new rule, so he got eliminated. It was a bunch of fucking bullshit. Because, you know, deep down inside I knew... It wasn't going to happen, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to, but I knew it wasn't. Yeah. And then that happened, and then I became what I am today. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, God. Yeah. Here, there you go. There you Good go. Good job, government. Way to go, dude. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> this next this next story, I really brought it up just for the headline. But uh, it's kind of interesting beyond that, but pretty much just for the headline. The headline is, A massive object may have struck Uranus, tilting it and, a, and ejecting material. <laughs> what did you say? It says, A massive object may have struck, struck Uranus. Uranus. Tilting it your and e- a- your Uranus or your anus? Your a- your anus and tilting it and ejecting material. What? <laughs> so something <laughs> <laughs> something struck your ass, made you tilt and ejected. Oh well, yeah, great. <laughs> Who wrote that fucking headline? The intellectualist. Um <laughs> okay, yeah. Apparently they are the opposite of that. It's, it's posted on Maven Maven Roundtable that I owe. Um uh, the Dan Broadbent. So anyway, it's a new study suggests that massive impacts may be why Uranus and Neptune look so different from one another. A new study suggests that the ice giants, Neptune and Uranus, uh, may have had catastrophic impacts in the past, resulting in why they look so different. Um, anyway, like I said, I pretty much just brought this up to the headline because 
I found it hilarious. Um, <laughs> yes, 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 I'm still a 12-year-old, uh, a 14-year-old laughing at Uranus jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. That's fucking funny. A massive object may have struck your ass. Yeah, may have. I think you would notice that if that happened. Like, Ejecting I'm material. Sure you would probably. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Now, right. they're, they're reporting this next one is, hey, this is a good thing. Maybe you want to do this. Okay. Maybe you don't. <laughs> Maybe you don't. Okay. On uh, WISN.com, Burger King, yes. Burger King is letting yes. you is letting you trade a photo of your ex for a free burger on Valentine's Day. What? If you have a picture of an ex, you can take it to Burger King. Oh, well, just bring a picture of anybody. And, and get a and get a, a yeah like how they just a, okay so they're well, giving away free burgers to everybody a free day. a free whopper <laughs> you get a free whopper at Burger King it's like you know as if my ex didn't do enough damage I'm gonna eat your nasty stuff um, <laughs> so, but anyway if you're hungry on Burger King and you got no no cash in your wallet and you don't mind eating a little poison then uh, head on down. The Burger King, and um, and and with a picture of somebody, like Moose says, it don't have to be your ex; it could be anybody. Right, just bring a picture of anybody. Just print it off uh, yeah, on a printer, yeah, or yeah. not even just any picture that you have laying around of somebody else that is not you. The Valentine. Like, this is my ex. It could even be a, a your dad. This uh, is my. <laughs> <laughs> right, Valentine's Day is coming up. The last thing you probably want to think about is your ex. Well, just, just, just this once, you may want to dig up that old memory box because Burger King is letting you trade those not so romantic memories for a burger. The Val Valentine's Day, oh, not not for everybody though. Uh, the Valentine <laughs> the Valentine's Day select Burger King locations in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Boston will have birds of prey themed breakup boxes. Uh, apparently. What? Apparently, Birds of Prey is an upcoming movie about Batman, oh. Batman oh, villain okay. Harley Quinn, and I've heard of it. Margot with oh, starring Margot Robbie. Ooh, she's hot. Okay, well, you never you don't know who Margot Robbie is. I've seen pictures of Harley Quinn. I oh, didn't yeah, know, she's I didn't know that. Hot. No, she's Margot Robbie is hot. Right. If you yeah. if you bring a printed photo of your ex and stuff it inside of one of these boxes, you'll get a free Whopper. Finally. Your ex is good for something. <laughs> Finally! Vote time, piece of shit! <laughs> so, so if, you, if you live in one of those cities, and you don't mind eating a little bit of Burger King poison... Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, don't mind eating a little, a little bit of Burger King poison. It's oh, just, if you only wait. do this just a little bit, it's not oh, going to fuck hang you up. Hang on, hang on. I, I, oh. I got the wrong... I got, it's one of those pages where you scroll and it picks up the next one. I URL. hate that. I know. It's uh, like they uh, put ads in the middle or something. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. So well, there, there uh, you go. A Whopper. A Whopper, Woody. A Whopper. Oh, yeah. It's a Whopper of a deal, let me tell you. So you could probably get the, uh, what is it, Impossible Whopper if you want. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably get that, too. You can get that fake you know, fake meat Whopper. The, yeah, the plant-based <laughs> Whopper. Yeah. Oh, God. Damn it. So, <laughs> anyway. Only in America. Only in America. Uh, I'm maybe. telling you, man, it's just awesome. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. So you just maybe. take a picture of that nasty old person you used to go out with. and Right. And, yeah, uh, just like it. And make sure it's a terrible picture of them, too, you know. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's like the worst picture of them ever. However, if you're there at the uh, Burger King or any of those other places uh, where you might go to get some kind of quick little whatever, uh, make sure if you're carrying an Android phone and, yes. you, and you're running Android 8 or 9, any of the uh, ver okay. versions of Android 8 or 9, shut off your freaking Bluetooth. Um, really? <laughs> yeah. Why? Android users at risk from Bluetooth, oh, Bluetooth hijack attack and are warned of short-distance worm threat. 
Oh, yep. great. Wonderful. Google has issued a security bulletin regarding vulnerabilities in Android operating system that could put users' devices at risk. One of the vulnerabilities, given a severity rating of critical by Google, relates to a flaw that could allow an attacker within range of a device's Bluetooth signal, that's about 30 feet, uh, to run malicious code without requiring any interaction from the user. So you don't even know. You're just carry, carrying your phone into one of these places. There's one of these hackers in there. They uh, they they uh, jump into your your device. Wow! And and they you run. They run this fucking worm. And uh, so anyway, researchers at ERNW who discovered the security vulnerability, uh, it described it as follows: On Android 8.0 to 9.0. A remote hacker within proximity can silently execute arbitrary code with privileges of Bluetooth daemon as long as Bluetooth is enabled. Disable your Bluetooth whenever you're not using it. So um, no user interaction is required, and only the Bluetooth MAC address of the target device has to be known. Uh, for some devices, Bluetooth MAC address... Right. Uh, you could get the Bluetooth Mac address from the Wi-Fi back address. The vulnerability can lead to theft of personal data and could potentially be used to spread malware. So, um, <laughs> anyway, there's a lot more technical information here in the, in this post, but uh, if you, just I, I and why would you keep the Bluetooth on anyway at normal times? Because Bluetooth burns through your battery. So, yeah, true. Like so, so, I, I don't think about it. You just don't think about it. Yeah, well, you think about think it. You don't think about turning it off. You don't. You know what I mean? Uh, unless you're using Bluetooth for, you know, at home for like speakers or uh, whatever, you know, in your hotel room. I don't know. Um, well, whatever you want to connect with Bluetooth for, uh, then then I would say shut that shit off. Uh, there's there's no reason to keep it on. Uh, and, unless you have an absolute need for it, it's easy to shut off and on to uh, on on Androids. There's a little button right up there up top, and you can you can shut Bluetooth off and on real real quick. Um, okay. Yeah, if you, if you look at that thing, man, uh, it's it's simple. It's simple to do. So uh, yeah, shut that shut that crap off. Um, and uh, okay, I clicked it. Yeah, yeah. So. I'll bookmark it. So I will catch. <laughs> Another right. one. Um, so when you're not like, it's weird because like you have to physically shut it off on your phone, otherwise it will come on automatically when you turn your car on. Oh yeah, it, it, yeah. If you're, you're in your car, um, it, it's different. Oh, so you're talking about when you're not? You no, 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 no. They can get. I mean, if it was like a car right next to you, they could probably access you. Oh, okay, um, okay. But, well, oh but, my god. But but in your car, you may the Bluetooth may be used for. Various functions within your vehicle, right? Uh, depending, oh depending on what you got. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, another wonderful thing, Android, Google, Google Photos. <laughs> nightmare. Oh my god! Nightmare. Google Photos bug sent private videos to the wrong people. <laughs> Great! Wonderful. Google Google's data export service exported. The wrong data. Uh, so Google has disclosed a nightmare of a security and privacy bug affecting Google Photo users for a time. It was possible for private photos to be downloaded by unrelated users. Uh, the, bu the bug happened through Google Takeout, a service that lets you download archives of your Google data. Apparently, the wrong videos were included in these user-generated archives, resulting in the users getting local copies of somebody else's videos. Uh, <laughs> Google has been sending emails to affected Takeout users. In the email, which was first spotted by 9to5Google, Google writes, some videos in Google Photos were incorrectly exported to unrelated user archives. One or more videos in your Google Photos uh, account was affected by this issue. If you download your data, it may be incomplete. It may contain videos that are not yours. Now, let's say you, you send your uh, significant other a sexy video. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else may have that video. That is not happening. <laughs> so, 
So uh, I, that doesn't apply to me. Okay, and unless you're using Google Take, <laughs> unless you unless you're using Google Takeout, you're probably all right. Uh, so yeah. It says this yeah, message is directed to Google Takeout users who tried to do- download <laughs> their own data and accidentally got someone else's. We've yet to see a message directed to the unrelated users whose videos ended up in the archive. Oh boy. So they 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 have asked Google if it plans to notify users who've had private videos exposed, and yeah, they haven't really answered on that one. <laughs> Google <laughs> Google says the issue has been solved. So uh, for what it's worth, <laughs> be careful with them Google services because you yeah, just no shit. never fucking. No. <laughs> uh, you don't. You do not. No. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right. So i got to say this. Uh, all right. I mean, I am not a prude. Trust me. I am not. Okay. Like, I am cool. You know, I'm all good. Uh-huh. Like, you know, I feel what I am anyway. But anyway, okay, so I was watching the Super Bowl. And the halftime show came on. I knew it was going to be J-Lo and Shakira, you know. Yeah. And they come on, and I'm like, really? And my 19-year-old son is watching this with me, right? And we're watching it on TV as it happens. Right. And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? I was like, I'm like, okay, this is like a sex show. That was one of my first comments. Uh Uh-huh. And then... Shakira's doing this moves with this rope and doing like bondage positions and shit. Yeah. And dancing like, and the rope like signifies a snake. And then she puts her hands up, her arms up, and it's like wrapped around her her wrists or whatever in a bondage position. And this is supposed to be entertainment. And I'm like, I looked at Zach and I'm like, little kids are watching. I'm like, kids are watching this right now. Sounds entertaining. You know what I mean? I mean, you're an adult male, Grim. <laughs> like even Zach made a comment. He's like, "This show was aimed at adult males." I'm like, "You got that right," <laughs> you know? Because well, then J Lo comes on, and, and oh yeah, and Shakira does this thing with her tongue, which is they they're trying to say it's like a, a it's a it's a nod to her heritage because it's like this something tongue wagging thing that Arab people or Latino people do or something. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? No. That's not what that was about, though. You get nice try, but no, it it looked like cutting or whatever. How cutting? I guess how you say that? Pussy eating. Yeah, eating pussy, carpet munching. <laughs> that's what that's what that move symbolized to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and so then J Lo comes on, and then they had this unknown rapper dude that I like. I'm old, so I don't know. I I'm not up on all this all this rap and hip hop shit. Like I, I like. This dude singer comes out, and he's doing, like, rapping, and he's singing, like, mm-hmm. badly, but he was doing, he was there. I'm like, who is that fucker? Even Zach didn't know who the fuck he was. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So, anyway, Jay, they're out there on stage, and Jay was like, grinding her ass into his, his cock. On, you know, I'm like, little kids are watching this. And then right. she fucking, seriously, she bends over, like, her backside, and that's what they show on the camera. Her whole ass bent over. I'm like, oh, that was a nice shot. <laughs> that just laughed. I'm like, really? Did we need to see that? Did little kids need to see your fucking ass on their whole TV? I don't think so. And it was just the over the top, dude. I mean, yeah, an adult male is going to, heterosexual male is going to love it. Right. Yeah, yeah. But if you want to watch it once and then watch it again with your, your tinfoil hat on, You'll see all this shit. Like, J-Lo, her outfits, like, her first outfit accentuated her fucking crotch. Like, totally. I mean, it was just, it was over the top. Then she's on a fucking stripper pole. I'm like, little kids are watching this. <laughs> yeah. Like I said to begin, when I started the story, I'm not a prude. But to me, that was not an appropriate show. It was not a family-friendly halftime show. Let's just put it that way. I mean, little kids, you know, we've talked about this before recently, too. Like, how they're trying to sexualize our kids. The kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're trying to introduce all this sex ed early. They're, you know, they're trying to normalize this. Sure they are. What the fuck? This is, this is deviant and fucked up 
behavior. You guys realize that this is fucked up behavior, right? Yeah. You guys realize that this is sick. This is sick shit. To put to, to be putting this sex right in the faces of our kids before they they should see it, it's bullshit. Yeah. You know, and I'm sorry. I, you know, if I was a parent, well, I am a parent. But if I was a parent of a small kid today, right, I would not know how to fuck it. I would have to really take. I'd have to make sure, like, I monitored the, what they saw on TV closely. Well, but how are you going to monitor what they teach them in school? Right. Exactly. Yeah. You got. That's why you got to do the homeschooling thing. Yeah. You know, but then people think you're fucking crazy. You know. All right. And it's just like you can't fucking. It's like they make it so impossible. To be natural and healthy and yeah. to be real. They don't want you being that way. That's why they've labeled people like us as deviants and fucking fucked up and mentally ill. Right. Like, seriously, they tell, in the DSM, whatever they call it, uh, the manual for fucking psychological disorders, people like me and Grimner are in there. People like you yeah, are in sure, there. Sure we are. We have, because we, have we, the, are, uh, we are not complying. We, we have the, what, what do you call it? The uh, um, odd. We, we have odd. It's op- opposition, right. op- oppositional defiant disorder. Which means yeah. we're... You know what? <laughs> Fuck you. I, yes, I do have that. And I'm happy to fucking have that, cunt. Yeah, I'm glad to be odd. I oppose yeah. you all the fucking way. Yeah, you want to yeah. call it a mental disorder? Fuck you. <laughs> You're the one with the fucking mental disorder, dude. Yeah. Not me. <laughs> You're the one that likes killing mom and shit. Yeah. I'm, I have I have not killed a person, another person. No, not I mean, no, no, I'm not gonna. You know, sorry, I'm I have not. not. I have not bombed the shit out of a place. I have not done that. Yep. yep and yep. then I asked my, my I tell my son and I were talking and I go. Uh, well, you my, my, my Meister Meister Brow brings up Common Core, but they've they've modified that now. Yes. At least, at least, yeah. definitely in California, it's now it's common whore. So uh, they're they're teaching all the kids, boys and common girls, whore. all all yeah. the boy boys and girls how, how to basically be whores. Be a common whore. In in, in yeah. elementary yeah. elementary the school. Slave to the state. Slave from, to the government. Yeah. From, from elementary school and up. They're, yeah, they're, they're, they want to make sure they know it. They're, they're, te- they're teaching common whore. So yes, um. <laughs> exactly. I've, I've, yep, that's a good word for it. Good term for it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. But then I, 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 we were talking about something, and I go, you know who the biggest users of the oil is, right? And he didn't say nothing. I go, the U.S. military. Uh, yeah. They want to blame all the people. Oh yeah, we use we buy gas guzzler guzzler cars, and we're they want to make you think that we, me and you, are using up the oil. Yeah. But guess what? No. The biggest user of the goddamn oil is the U.S. military. Sure. They are the biggest consumer in the world for oil. Yeah. Okay? So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Right. Right. Ever think about that, though? No one ever thinks about that. No one ever brings it up. We've talked about it on Freakers, but right. it's like, no, you know, it's like, really? Yeah, really. If, if you weren't fighting all these, if you weren't bombing the shit out of other places, maybe we wouldn't be using up so much oil. Exactly. Dumbass. It's not <laughs> rocket science. It's yeah. really not. Yeah. It's common fucking sense. Absolutely. Anyway, Moose, uh, that link that Cowboy Tech put in there, you might want to uh, bookmark that for later watching. I will do that. Okay. And uh, you can make sure your machine is set to be as secure as possible. All right. And the rest Good of you, one. The rest Thank you, Cowboy Tech. Thank the, you. The, re- the rest of you uh, Windows 10 users. Um, all right, I got something to My go. My hero. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> isn't, isn't, isn't he great? You know, I got some something to go yes. to, but uh, <laughs> but I got something to go to, but it's a totally different direction. So we'll save it for the, after this set here. All right, and, let's do uh, that, and we shall return. We shall. This is Leo. Hopefully. Yeah, this is this is Leo's new one. He puts out a. He, he seems like he puts out a vid every Friday. Uh, okay. Le, Le, Leo Maraccioli. It's the Stones, baby. All right, baby. Yeah, baby. Oh. (laughs) 
Yes, we are here to drink your beer. Your alcohol to us will fall. Ah, yes, indeed. That is Ale Storm out with a drink. It's a, it's an awesome song. And before that, another awesome song, Life's Been Good by Joe Walsh. And, um, for, unless you missed, if you missed it there in the chat, that Joe Walsh that the, uh, uh, the bot looked up that was 58 is not this Joe Walsh. This Joe Walsh is 72, 72 years old. Uh, so, <laughs> the different Joe, the other one's like some douchebag politician. And we kicked it off there with, uh, Leo Baraccioli's, uh, new release from today, Paint It Black. Yeah, Joe. I mean, uh, Leo. <laughs> I knew Joe Walsh from the Eagles or whatever it was, like, in his 70s. Yeah, he's 72. Uh, the the yeah. other one is that douchebag politician. Uh, yeah. The problem with getting older is you forget that you're getting older, and you think back, like, when you first, you think, like, when I first got introduced to Joe Walsh, I'm like, I think of him at that age. <laughs> I don't think of him being seventy. You know what I mean? According to the, <laughs> according to the Wikipedia article, Joe Walsh is known as the clown prince of rock and roll. Not the crown awesome. prince. Not the crown prince. The clown prince. Clown prince. Okay. <laughs> All right, you know Joe's a good guy. Joe is a good guy. The one song. Um, yeah, 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 that's a good thing. The one song. He talks about being a rock and roll star. What's that song? Life's been good. I, I don't know. Life's been good. Yes, that, life's one, been good. One that just, is one of my favorite songs of all fucking time. The the one we just played. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Life is good. Yeah, life's been good. Life's yeah. been good. Yeah, life's been good to me. So oh far. yeah, that was the one we played. Oh, never mind. I, I, uh, <laughs> it was a live version. It was a funny. Oh, yeah. It's a funny version. You're right. Uh, yeah. No, it's it's a great. Thing. Yeah, that is my favorite. One of my favorite Joe Walsh songs. Right? Rocky Mountain High. You know, that's a, one of his classics. Oh yeah, that's a uh, good one. Where, where, where'd my cursor go? See, uh, he was in the Eagles. Yeah, he well for a while. Yeah, and then he, he left the he, Eagles. He wasn't always so part of. The, he wasn't always part of the Eagles. He was part. He was in James Gang. Uh, yeah. Who did Funk Forty Nine? Um, so you're older than me, so you know all his. I'm, re I'm reading off Wikipedia here. Um, <laughs> oh, you okay? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he was in something called Barnstorm, the Eagles, the Party Boys. He was his Ringo star in his All Star Band. He's a good guitarist. He's a good guitarist. He's an awesome guitarist. He was part of the short-lived supergroup called The Best. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, he went to Kent State. Uh, blah, 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 cool. blah. All right, so yeah, Rocky Mountain White Way, Life's Been Good, All Night Long, A Life of Illusion, Ordinary Average Guy. I love that song. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. Oh, I love that song. So, uh, yeah, and he played yeah. with, you know, he's played with everybody. Clapton oh, he, and he, he, well, he's Townsend. Oh, he's good. Yeah. He's an excellent yeah. guitarist. Yeah. You know, who, right. you know, all musicians want to play with excellent guitarists. And, and apparently his yeah. name is Joseph Fiddler. Real? Wow. Yeah, and he changed it to Walsh. I wonder if he can play the fiddle. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Probably because he's a guitar player. It's a stringed instrument. Love, you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe. Probably. Yeah, maybe. Some people can just like pick up an instrument and start playing. I'm like, sure. that's not me. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Like I can like stand up and start dancing. Kind yeah, of the same yeah. thing. Or stand up and start singing. Kind of the same thing. Right, right, right. You know, I, I can play a mean tambourine, so I should I should never say again that I cannot play a musical instrument. Yeah. Because I can. I right. can play a musical instrument. Right, right, right. I can play a tambourine <laughs> and a washboard, probably. There you go. Because I have rhythm, you know, and that's what you need for those instruments. You have Girl's to have got a rhythm. Bump, and I'm a dancer, so of course rhythm. I have a rhythm. Hello, I always have the rhythm. <laughs> like I could dance to any song, any song. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, yeah. I'm sure. I could. I'm sure. I could. Okay, Most helpful, like, help, helpful, oh, helpful hint time. Helpful hint time. All right. Okay. You know, you know a lot. I of, need those. Like, yeah, of course. No, everybody needs these. Uh, but uh, you know, in a lot of the stuff you get, uh, food or uh, vitamins or whatever, they'll come right uh, with a, with a, a a little pack, a little packet in there. Yep. Silica gel. The silica gel? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, this article posted here on lifehacker.com. Okay. 
the best ways to use your old silica gel packets. See, I save them. I, not the packets, but, you know, in the little the allergy medication that I get? Yeah. It's over the counter. They yeah. have the plastic ones. Yeah, those say that's They have a little plastic. It's not the bags. It's like an actual, like a plastic. Yeah, I, I, I'm, for I'm, it. I'm familiar with those. Those work the yeah, same. Yeah, I, I keep those because Ooh. I put I keep them and put them in a little baggie. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, it says, uh, um... These little packets you find inside of packaging for everything from shoes to electronics to even some food right. uh, that absorb moisture. Uh, yeah. Once you've unpacked your item, you probably heed the warning on many of these desiccant packets that say do not eat. Hopefully you don't right. eat them and, okay, throw, yeah. and, and throw them away. Definitely don't eat them. Uh, <laughs> See, I, I throw those pa- little, the, the cloth packets, I throw them away. Yeah, you can keep those too. Uh, so it says uh, okay. put, a, put them in your gym bag. Uh, if you have a gym bag, right? Uh, uh, and they they absorb the odors and such. Um, let's see, they extend the the life of razor blades. So if yep, you put, keeps things dry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it keeps your tools dry and rust free. Um, uh, you can use them for nearly any food. You keep it in your, you know, like put it in your rice or whatever. Just put it your in your weed. There. Put it in your weed. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't, you don't really want to suck. No, your, you don't want your weed to be dry. No, Never you, mind. you don't want to suck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for your headphones, uh, to keep them from getting stinky with silica gel packets. That's so cool. You put them, put them in there inside that. Um, <laughs> how to safeguard your electronics in a hurricane. I'm not sure that's related. Like for a hockey bag? Yeah, yeah, you absolutely. Need like, you any, would need any, like a hundred of them. Any any gym bag. <laughs> uh, it says perfect. For, right. uh, for, uh, for, for, protect your photo memories. Uh, so it says it recommends uh, stashing a few silica gel packets in boxes or bins where you store photos or photo albums. That's a good idea yeah, because yeah. you don't want moisture getting to your photos and stuff. And get the musty smell out of books. You got old yes. books to get that smell. Oh wow! Um, okay. F- for storing seeds. So if you're if you're uh, right, you got seeds, okay. you know, put them, you know, drying yep. and sorting, and throw throw a silica packet in there. Um, pre- prevent silver from tarnishing. Just uh, wow. all kinds of handy little hints there for you all, you know. Wow. Uh, just it's free because you're you're already, you've already paid for these things. Yeah, you paid for it. It's in there. You might as well store them up, sack them up, and yeah. then you can like use them wherever you want. Right, right. But uh, as long as the lines, I was going to say the. What we're talking about is to keep things dry, right? Yeah, so well, like, dry, dry and odor free. Right, and then I brought up the hockey bag issue, though. Yeah. So let's say you have a gym bag or a hockey bag, and it stinks really bad, <laughs> and you don't want it to. You can get essential oils and put it on cotton balls and stash it inside the bag, and that will help keep your bag being fresh too. As yeah. well as the deficit, you know, the the, the drying um, things, you can put those in there, and you can also use essential oils. Right. Like, you could probably even put, like, a drop of essential oil on the packet of, what's what's it called, desiccant or something? Desiccant. Desiccant. You can put a drop of oil on that little packet, and then it will, like, a peppermint or lavender or whatever smell, you know? Yeah, and that will help to keep your gym ba- your gym bag or whatever fresh. Right, right. Too. Essential oils are like cool. You guys should look into them. Like a lot of people think it's all bullshit, but it's really not. Oh no, they're great stuff. They're, they're no, great yeah, stuff. they're great. They work. So, um, for much of the U.S. this coming week, bundle up, babies. Uh, Why? The, uh, Strong push of Arctic air, polar vortex oh, great. to strike the U.S. next week. Uh, this is posted on the 4th, which was Tuesday, so, but it's coming. A polar vortex will strike the United States early next week, according to AccuWeather. Another one. Okay. Uh, AccuWeather uh, lead long-range meteorologist Paul Pastelock said central states would be the first to experience the blast of Arctic air. Which is me. It I'm, is I'm you. like right next to Canada. I'm like right next to Canada, dude. But like, it, right. but this dips all the way down to southern New Mexico, uh, through through Texas. Which means you. Texas, <laughs> Texas, Oklahoma, Arizona, Woody. Uh, so yeah, you, we're all we're all gonna get socked with this uh, this cold air, and I've already seen the uh, thing saying it's, it's gonna be. Um, 
So, well, I'm in Wisconsin, so I'm already used to it. It's you guys down there that got to fucking be pre- prepping. I'm already prepped here. Like, I'm used to this shit. Yeah. You guys down there, you're not used to this. You guys got to do what you got to do. So they're anticipating you know? a strong push of Arctic air will take place in the United States during the second and third week of February. Make sure you wrap those pipes there, Meister Brow. Yep, second and third week of February in response to displacement or weakening of the polar vortex during the first week of February, which get we have. Some of that bla- oh, we get had, some we of had, that black foam stuff, the pipe wrapping foam stuff, that yeah. would work. We, we had snow here this week. It was cold as shit this week here. Yeah. Um, today it was warm. I mean, it was in the upper, upper well, close to 50. Uh, anyway, so it said uh, <laughs> the area of high pressure above much of the southwest Atlantic this winter has led to unseasonably warm temperatures for the east coast. Uh, for this reason, we expect the upcoming big discharge of Arctic air to target the interior west and northern plains view initially, uh, where it might be more persistent as February progresses. Uh, much colder right. air, much colder air could work into the eastern states during the middle to later parts. So of the groundhog, February. Was, groundhog was wrong. He's, he's usually yeah. wrong. He's right about thirty percent of the time. Which oh, is, well, see, that's bad odds. Well, well, yeah, it's less I than mean, flipping a coin. That's if, really bad. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you flip a coin and get right half the time. But yeah, that's shit. That's shit. That's that, shit. That, that groundhog, he don't know shit. He's, he's, no, he doesn't. Uh, that, that groundhog's a dill hole. No, he's dumb. <laughs> 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 I even mentioned it. It says, but, 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 Punxsutawney Phil didn't see right. his shadow on yeah, Sunday. See? I knew they were going to bring the groundhog in somehow. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what it is about that goddamn groundhog. <laughs> Seriously. You know, ever yeah. since that movie Groundhog Day came out, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. Bill Murray's not finest moment. <laughs> no, not really. No, not at all. No. For sure he wants to fucking forget all about that. <laughs> but he never will because no, that, he won't. Stupid, that stupid alarm keeps going he's off. He's stuck with it now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, here's here's a, I, I guess, good article, good news article. Um, it, it's better than I, the way it is now. <laughs> What is this new art? What's this, better than the way it is? From, from the free dot project dot com. Yeah. Posted uh, today. Uh, new law to decriminalize, decriminalize prostitution. Uh, okay. I'm yeah. all for this law. But then it goes on to say I'm a lot. I'm not for law. I'm not for law. Uh, then it goes uh, in, part, in, part, in, part, in part of the same headline. It says allowing cops to focus on actual crime. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you very much, Brainiac, for fucking finally realizing that, dumbass. <laughs> Sex is not a crime, all right? Oh, God. Go so, arrest some motherfucking asshole, murderer. Mont, Mont, no. Montpelier, Vermont. Oh, in, Vermont. In, the, I like Vermont. in the land of the free, it is against the law to pay or get paid to have sex outside of Nevada, unless... Right. That sex is filmed, distributed online, and taxed. Uh, oh, are you kidding me now? Come <laughs> well, on, no, no, no. Is this the onion? Or no, no, it's true. It's real. It's no, true. No. If 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 you if you <laughs> film it, if you film it, distribute it online, and pay taxes, it's perfectly fine. Oh, wow! To get paid for. All right. To get but paid, paid pay for sex. Taxes, you gotta do all that shit. Uh, one of the least talked about systems of oppression in the United States is that of persecuting prostitution. Exactly. The, the, the brutal irony of legalizing yes. abortion, le- legalizing abortion under the what? guise... Why are you bringing this to the conversation? Let me finish the sentence. Okay, sorry, sorry. The, the brutal irony of legalizing abortion under the guise of it's my body, my choice, while keeping prostitution illegal, illustrates how backward a society we live in. Sure, you can end a potential life inside of you, but try yes, to make but try to make money selling your body, and we'll kidnap and cage you. Oh my God, it's now, ridiculous! Now, now, lawmakers in Vermont are seeking to change that. It's important to note that when the uh, referencing prostitution, we're talking about the mutually beneficial exchange of sexual favors for money by two or more consenting partners, not forced human trafficking. It's called the oldest profession in the world for a reason. 
Sex is a basic human need. One need only observe the explosive uh, population growth of humans in the last 10,000 years to see the desire to mate is inherent in each and every one of us. When one takes this into consideration, the notion of outlawing consensual sex is uh, seen for what it is, sheer insanity. Yes, exactly. Just like the war on drugs creates crimes by pushing the unending demand for illicit substances into the black market, the war on the sex trade creates crime in the same manner. Uh, because the demand for sex is pushed into dark alleys and late night street corners, a woman working in the sex trade becomes far more vulnerable than if they were legally allowed to operate out of a brick and mortar setup. This this danger of working Oh my god. This danger of working on the street drives the need for protection from pimps who are often more abusive than any customer. Uh, despite the tens of thousands of arrests each year, the market has found a way to provide the service of sex safer solutions. In spite of laws, sellers of sex have found ways to safely conduct business. Right, of course they have, because it's just like weed. By setting, it's been around since the beginning of time. Yeah, by setting up massage yeah. parlors using phone We're books. We're still gonna fucking do it. We're still gonna fucking pay for f sex. <laughs> yeah. It's the uh, oldest profession for a reason. It's been around since the beginning of time. Uh, besides Humans being... Humans want sex. Humans do sex. That's yes, what they, they do. do. Besides being an immoral gang of thieves, the state is also relentless. They have deep pockets... Of course they are. They have deep pockets of extorted tax dollars of which to Fuckers. dig in to enforce their distorted will on the people. So, uh... And anyway, you could read it. There's more to the article, plenty more. But uh, hooray for Vermont, you know, in a, in a very limited banner. Um, it, <laughs> I mean, they're just talking about decriminalization. They're not talking about legalization. Um, so it, it's, you know, whatever. It's better than it is. Uh, them totally staying out of it would be ideal, but, of course, that's never going to happen. If they've got a way to be in, in somebody's business, they're going to be in somebody's business. Um, anyway, hooray a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yay. Yeah. <laughs> it's still going to happen. I mean, it's been going on since the dawn of time. Yeah. I mean, it... it, it uh... It shouldn't be illegal. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Now, this... this Consensual, this, not illegal. The, the, this this article popped up yesterday, and I posted it several places, and nobody seemed to take notice. I, or if they did, uh, maybe they just didn't care to comment on it or whatever. I don't know. And it's, we're going back to coronavirus. Oh, my God. Okay. From the Daily Mail. Has China's biggest online news site revealed real coronavirus death figures? Screen, screen grabs show 24,589 death toll. Are you kidding me? 24,589 death toll. Holy. That, that says that sparked wild conspiracy theories and have been digitally altered. Um, not really, not so much. Uh, anyway, so... Um, the the grab purports wow. to show the death toll of 24,589 80 times the official figures while some allegedly some allegedly leaked figures were proof of a government cover up uh, others argued the viral images could have been modified in a smear campaign so they could. They, could. they 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 immediately this was on uh, Tencent which is a, a one of the chinese uh, news sites um uh, news tv stations um, shows the screen grabs 24,589 deaths and then they immediately or well with, within moments uh, re retraced that back to 304 oh no no no, no not, not 24,000 300 300 and, and the number of infected oh yeah big difference Sorry, yeah come on and, and, <laughs> they're like, oh they're not going to notice they think we they know how many people we have, we have here so they're right, not going right. to notice uh, so, <laughs> but somebody gra somebody did a screen grab of it real quick there. Um, wow! And it shows the number of infected at one hundred and fifty four thousand. Uh, wow! Ra rather than uh, four, four, fourteen thousand that they they admit to. 
Um, so, uh, I, I don't know, you know, no, like I said, nobody, it didn't, it didn't gain any traction on this here. Um, it, I, I, I posted it out there in various places on Twitter, on, on Minds, on, uh, on Freedoms Network. Okay, cool. And, and no, but nobody even made a, made a comment or nothing on it. Nobody, huh. nobody liked it or retweeted it or anything. It was mm. like, what the hell, people? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Look at what's the program. Yeah, look at these freaking numbers, man. Get to the chopper. Get yeah, to the yeah, chopper. Yeah, but then I, I, I say, okay, how many people actually die from the flu each year? How many? How not many? as many as they say. Not as many as they say. Um, and this article posted on uh, constitutionalhealth.com uh, points this out. Influenza is a cash cow for big pharma. Hell yeah, dude. Just like <laughs> cancer. Make no mistake, influenza is big business. Any farmer, yeah, it is. Get your flu shot. Remember this. Any pharmacy bigger than a phone booth is giving out flu shots. Doctors' offices are pushing them. Many states recently passed laws allowing dentists to give flu shots, and others are awesome. Uh, 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 others are setting up immunization stations in schools. Flu clinics oh, are pop flu clinics are popping up everywhere. Even big box retail stores who have no business mucking around in healthcare are getting in on the act. What? Yeah, well, like Walmart. You can go to Walmart or Walgreens. Well, and, Walmart's got a pharmacy, an actual pharmacy. Yeah, well, well, whatever. So there's Walgreens, but the, uh, whatever. Right. You can go to those places and get your flu shot. Not Best Buy, though. I, I would hope not. You're not going <laughs> to Best Buy. <laughs> <laughs> Says if you if you think this has anything at all to do with your health, think again. Do you really think these right. folks? Right. Think <laughs> again. Please think again. Do Please you, think and then think some more. Do you really think these folks are doing this out of the goodness of their hearts? No, no, I do not. <laughs> of no, course not. That. Of course I not. I don't think that. There's big money to be made from the flu. But to make the money, first they have to scare you into getting the shot. Right. They that, have to make you want to come in and get that goddamn thing. That's where that's where the news headlines come in and the big scary. Exactly. Big Save scary. your family. Do a favor for your, your, your loved ones. Yep. Uh, the big scary and outright untrue statistics about flu deaths. Not only fear, Graham, but they guilt you into it, too. Yep. It says for they years. They put you on a guilt trip. If you don't get this, you could be putting your family at risk. Yeah. For so for vac- get, make sure your whole family is vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck says, you. <laughs> it says for years the CDC has been telling us that thirty some thousand people die of the flu every year. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's but, fucking bullshit. But here's the truth: most of those deaths are really not influenza. Uh, right. We, we we're fed a lot of half truths and misinformation yep. uh, about our health on a regular basis. Exactly. This, this one, however, is just a flat out lie. What is a flu like illness anyway? To get away with this lie, they do two things. First, they lump flu and pneumonia together. If you look at the U.S. vital stats exactly. record for exactly. any year. You'll you'll find dozens. They blend the data. They blend the data. You'll you'll find dozens of causes of death, along with the number of people who died from them. It's a huge table that stretches over many pages. In the flu section of this table, you'll find three different listings: influenza, and pneumonia, influenza, and pneumonia. The first number of uh, influenza and pneumonia grouped together is huge. The third is pneumonia alone. It's huge, too. The second is influenza by itself. It's very small. <laughs> anyway, I don't need to really go through this with you, but uh, I, I can tell you that uh, um, it is very small. Um, and, and they get down to here. To, to, put, yes, the, to, to put these numbers into perspective, um, which uh, the total is uh, less than 300 per year. The, the real, right. the real actual total. Yes, the but real number. To put this into perspective, in 2013, more than 3,000 people died of malnutrition. 3,630 died of asthma. 2,988 right. died of peptic ulcers. But wow. there's, no, there's no scare campaigns over those conditions. 3,000 people died of ulcers. Uh, yeah. Uh, there, there's no, wow. there, uh, there's no scare campaigns over those conditions. Right. No, well, there's not. Why not? 
out. There's no exactly. There's no vaccine to sell. There's no money in it. There's no vaccine to sell. Right. So there's no money in it. So yep. they, they they can't tell you. Oh, everybody needs to get their peptic ulcer shots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the whole, they're not out there saying that. No, they're not. Definitely not. No. Yeah. So. Motherfuckers. Yeah, I know a bunch of bad. Sorry, things. I can't. I I can't contain my contempt. I can only. I do understand. It for a little bit. And I'm, I'm like, fuck you. I I understand 100. percent I'm not an idiot over here. <laughs> you might think I am, but I'm not as dumb as you think. She I am. is so not. No, you. she 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 is she is no idiot. <laughs> I'm not. I, I you know I might be in some ways, but in a lot of ways I'm not. So, yeah. yay, pay me. <laughs> Oh God! I've been watching too much stand-up comedy. I seriously think I have a future in this room. I do. I think. I oh, hey! Do. Speaking of watching stuff, and I, I don't know if did I mention <laughs> seriously? <laughs> did, did I, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, but I, I watched yeah. the show on uh, Amazon this week. Um, okay, which the, one? The, it's the Ted Bundy thing, the new Ted Bundy thing. Oh yeah, yeah! I started watching that too. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 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 enthralling. It, yeah, it, I'm like it, it, I was so fascinated by this. It's yeah. it's, from, it's from the perspective of his girlfriend Elizabeth. Yep, and she's a real person. Yeah, and and, and, and her daughter. Da- they weren't married, but they were together. Right, and her daughter married, Molly, yeah. and her daughter Molly. Yep. And then I la- started watching that. Yep. And later on, they bring in that Carol, the one that married him, and, yep. and during the right. During the uh, trial of of the when he right. murdered the twelve year old yeah, girl, yeah, someone actually married him and was he on trial for that. Yeah, when, when he when he when he took he was he was just being convicted of, of murdering this twelve year old girl and this woman says, right. yeah, this woman and says, this oh yeah, how much of a narcissist and a charmer he was. He was like a total narcissist, dude. And, and that woman says, oh yeah, I'll marry you. Like and then and then, he, and then he fathered the child while he was in prison. Right, right. <laughs> it's like oh my god, dude. Ah, it's crazy stuff. It's a, it's really compelling. It really is. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah, it was, it was I in, like it so it, far. It, it yeah. was, it I was just got into it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we're gonna play in this set here. This okay. is this is a full on cowboy tech request set. All right, I like that. I like cowboy tech requests. All right, well here you go. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Get that duck. Not me. Someone else. No, cowboy tech needs to be friended. <laughs> ah, that's great stuff there. Uh, the great, great set, Cowboy Tech. There, yeah, man. Um, <laughs> that last one there was the Who? Who are you? Who the fuck are you? Uh, before that, <laughs> uh, we, we had the Doors doing Roadhouse Blues there, uh, live in New York in 1970, and we kicked it off with Fleetwood Mac doing Hypnotized uh, or Hypnotized, if you want. Whatever, whatever, whatever strikes your strikes your fancy. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can be hypnotized if you like. Oh man, so uh, yeah, it's, that's great, great, uh, cool, cool stuff, Cowboy Tech. Thank you very much. Um, appreciated. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, Moose, you there? Yes, thank you, Cowboy Tech. Um, yes, who the fuck are you? Who the um, fuck if you don't know you? who you are, you should definitely find out. It it, uh, it would be yeah I'd suggest that be, yeah like some people can't do that some people are so afraid like they're really scared of themselves yeah which, yeah which don't be like that don't be like that man yeah don't be like that <laughs> oh boy <laughs> yeah jeez all right. <laughs> So uh, I put a, um, a thing on Facebook just now. Okay. On the Billy Strings fan page, fan page official. Okay. Okay, throwing my hat into the ring. I think Billy Strings could do an amazing cover of Who Are You by The Who. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they could. They could nail it. They could nail it. It could be epic, dude. Sure, sure. I mean, because they're so good at covering. I mean, even infamous string lusters, they are so good at covering. Like, if they play... Like tomorrow night, I'm seeing the infamous string dusters. If they play, he's gone. Uh huh. I will melt into a puddle right on the da- on the floor right there. Ah, okay. If they play biscuits, I'll be I'll be a mess. <laughs> yeah. If they play Bob Dylan, don't think twice. I will definitely like probably burst into flames. 
yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it could happen. Like, that's how, you know, my mind could epically be blown tomorrow, you know. Yeah. Like, which, I want this. I'm asking for it. I like this. I want this to happen. <laughs> sure. But I'm talking metaphorically. Like, I really don't want to burst into flames. Like, I'm not, like, serious, you know. Well, I'm glad to know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, hey, I seriously bought the ticket for this concert, like, December 25th or 26th. 26th. Okay. Yeah, this is how soaked I've been for this concert. Like, December 26th is how many months ago? Like, three? Yeah. Like, okay. You know, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, um... Would you pay to get lectured about something? Do you, Depends would, on the topic. Would, 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 would you pay $2,500? No. You're, you're, a, you're a white woman. <laughs> yeah, white. No, I don't like that term. I don't associate with that term. I'm not white. I'm not white. No, I am okay. not white. I don't associate with that term. All right, well, here we are. David, I'm a woman. Da, I'm da, a human woman. Uh, da, David, David Ike dot com. Okay. Liberal white women pay twenty <laughs> pay twenty five hundred dollars to be lectured about how racist they are. Oh, I saw that. I thought it was bullshit. Like, if it wasn't bullshit, I didn't really want to click on the story. Like it, I didn't want to click on the story either way. It's, like, it's I was real. Like, it's real. Boring. It's Don't give a real. shit. Liberal, I, liberal, I, liberal white women across America are paying twenty five hundred dollars to attend dinners at which they are lectured by two non white women about how racist they are. Yes, really. Are you <laughs> kidding me right now? <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh my fucking god! Uh, the, the Guardian reports on race to dinner, a scheme where co-founders Regina Jackson, who was black. And Sarah Rao, who identifies as an Indian American, makes the white, guilt-riddled, rich white women admit to their subconscious bigotry. Ooh, a guilt trip dinner. Woohoo! Yeah. Paying twenty five hundred bucks for that. All right. uh, hell no! <laughs> Fuck no! It says. It says recently I have been driving around. Uh, seeing a black person and having the assumption that they are up to no good, said Allison Goober. Goobser? Goober? 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 What? <laughs> Allison Gooberzilla. Um, immediately, <laughs> immediately after, I am, I am like, that's no good. This is a human just doing what they're doing. Why do I think that? Maybe, maybe she's been reading too many FBI crime statistics. Uh, participants were were also asked. Maybe. What was a racist thing you did recently? Jess Campbell. Oh my God! Really? Uh, Jess Campbell Swanson struggled to prostrate herself <laughs> adequately, stuttering. I want to hire people of color, not because I want to be a white. Uh, uh, she wants to hire people of color. Not, oh my God! Even saying people of color uh, is racist, bitch. Not because You're I want. Stupid. Not because I want to be a white savior. Oh my God! I, I, I have it. Me right now. I have explored my need for validation. I'm working through that. Um, yeah, I'm struggling. Working through it. Oh my! Her, I want to like really seriously, lady. You're, her, fucked You're fucked up. You're fucked up. Her need for validation. Oh my! What? Uh, yeah. So subsequent, subsequently committed to writing a journal to note down things or thoughts that could be considered racist. Oh my God! Another another woman, Morgan Richards. Admitted that she was still potentially racist, despite the, the, despite potentially the, okay. the, despite adopting two black children. When someone what? When, <laughs> when someone patronizingly labeled her a white savior for adopting them, oh my God. Richards responded, "What These I people are all nuts, dude. They're all fucked up. They're all she, she said. She said." She said, what I went through to be the, be a mother, I didn't care they were black. Mental illness does not recognize race. So so you admit it. Or so, gender. Wait, 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 so you admit it is stooping low to adopt a black child, Rao challenged her. 
To which Richard responded what? by... I'm telling you, these people are insane. Okay? They're fucking <laughs> so, sick. So I insane. guess, I guess, okay, in the one case, if somebody wants to hire people that are that are not white, then they should just only hire white people. So right. screw, Hello? screw anybody oh, that's not white dude. because I, I can't. I can't hire you, or I'm a white savior. And the yeah. other, the other one, the kids, oh my god, uh, the, the kids that the kids that are in the foster homes or the adoption centers, they can't, you can't, you can't adopt them because if they, oh and you're you're trying to be a white savior by by adopting. You know this whole race thing needs to just go out the fucking window. Government is the one that perpetuates is the thing that perpetuates <laughs> racism. You all need to just get over your fucking selves and realize you're goddamn human beings. And you know what? Some human beings have different color skin and different shaped eyes. And everyone's fucking different. No one's a goddamn fucking saying, you motherfuckers. It doesn't matter what the fuck you look like. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get the fuck over yourselves. Uh, seriously. Oh. Yeah, seriously. Yes. God okay. damn motherfucking dumbasses. Quit <laughs> being stupid and fall for the goddamn government rhetoric. Yeah. Quit it. Stop it now. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. (laughs) Thank you. Okay. Oh, my God. Next. Next, we have a story on Russia Today, RT.com. Cocktails on the house? Kitchen taps in an Indian... Nothing's on the goddamn house. Well, this was. uh, Kitchen taps in Indian town flow with booze after well contamination mishap. (laughs) So... Residents in one Indian town are abuzz after their kitchen taps began gushing with the hard stuff. With with an ill-fated attempt by local officials to dispose of confiscated liquor, turning one neighborhood into a speakeasy. <laughs> Apartment complex. Is this though, an onion piece? No, or it's, I told you it's oh, Russia. It's Russia today. Real? It's okay. Russia today. Uh, basically, what happened here was the. Uh, the government confiscated a bunch of booze and they dumped it into this well and the and the well fed this neighborhood and and the, <laughs> the, so the people turn on their taps and out comes out, pouring out comes booze. Oh my <laughs> fucking god! Government at its that freaking can't be a real thing, ground. It is. It is. It's in India. Where was this? India. India. Oh, India. A little, okay. little town in India. And, um, oh my God! Can you imagine? Oh yeah. Okay. Drink up, kitties. That's government at its finest. Let me tell Drink you. Drink up, mom. <laughs> Drink up, animals. Yeah, you're all getting drunk tonight. So it's all said and done. By all accounts, nobody was harmed by the free cocktails. Oh but, no. But some of the affected residents have filed complaints. <laughs> affected. <laughs> with the regional health department. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't just like it was all some kind of some one good thing. It was like a mixture. Of, uh, oh, ick, ick. Of ver- so ver- gross, various, gross, very gross, very gross, a mixture, a mixture of various alcohols. Ick, ick, yeah, ick. It, it came out a, a strange brown ick. liquid. Ick. Um, <laughs> so they had seized, they had seized and alcohol. Like, people bitch about the U.S. like living in the U.S. You know, they, like, it, you don't know what it's like to, to live in goddamn Bangladesh. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so the government had. I live in Bangladesh <laughs> for a month or like three days and get back to me. All right. Well, they they, they seized the government seized alcohol, uh, six thousand liters of brandy, beer, and rum, and they poured it into the pit near the affected home. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the pit meaning the sewer system, the uh, water system. The, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Basically, it fed into like, the well. But you know, they don't have systems like we have systems. It fed it fed into the well there. Yeah, so. and they don't have systems like we have systems. Yeah, yeah, it's so yeah. overpopulated and so like poor. Like you guys would not last a fucking day. Oh hell no! I would. I wouldn't last a day. It, it, would, it, would, you know? it, it would be horrible for anybody. It would be bad. It would be very bad. Yeah, you would not. You would not like it. I'm just saying. So, All right, and finally, finally. Yeah. <laughs> idiot. Yeah. Finally, idiot. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Drunk Ohio man charged with calling cops 25 times in search of a lost hoodie. What? Are you kidding? Okay. Dude. Okay, we're done with this guy calling. He wants to be put in the clink. 
walked right off for three days, obviously. Dude, where's, dude, dude, where's my hoodie? Um, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. A confused and inebriated Ohio man looking for answers <laughs> in the wrong place frantically called cops 25 times in search of his lost hooded sweatshirt. Harv's oh, Gardner. I, you Har probably thought he was called the bar. Harv's Gardner, 32, is now facing felony charges of disrupting, disrupting public services after so being bad. arrested Monday following his alleged torrent of phone calls. It's when, a sweatshirt, dude. When people arrived, the defendant, who only wanted rides around town to find his hoodie that he lost, <laughs> police told Gardner who was allegedly intoxicated, intoxicated at the oh, time. Allegedly. Yes, thank. Uh, <laughs> to simply go back to bed, but he kept calling right. cops, providing different locations, providing different locations for cops to respond to. <laughs> oh, go find my hoodie. So anyway, he's uh, a uh, uh, dis disruption of public services in Ohio. Is he a, gets the idiot of the week. It, it's a, it's a, it, idiot, idiot of the week, which uh, we don't even have that as no, a thing here. Yeah. But I'm putting it right now. He's the idiot of the week. Okay, disruption of public services in Ohio is a fourth degree felony, publishable, punishable. By up to 18 months in prison and a fine of up to $5,000. Oh, my God. 18 months in prison? Well, yeah. <laughs> call in the cop. You, you call the cops 25 times for something. Exactly. That's They're going to bust stupid. your ass for something. And they, they yeah. are going to fuck with you. Okay, we got to do our last yeah. set. We got to do, right, do that. We got to do our last set here. Uh, this is a new it's one. Real people. This is a new one from uh, Christopher Amoroso. Um, yeah. You know him. You love him. He's one of our... One of our favorite Black Betty singers, but All not right. tonight. I just want to say, it's almost a full moon. Almost. Good old Pat Travers, uh, Black Betty there at the Blues Garage back in 2012. Oh, yeah, Pat, tearing it up. Before that, we had R.L. Burnside with It's Bad, you know. And we kicked it off there with a brand new one from Christopher Amoroso, Burning Hell, off the Swamp Rock music. Yeah, Christopher Amoroso, he's the king of the Swamp Rock music, man. All right, let me remind you. Yeah, he is. He yeah. is. Let me remind you all once again, it's February. This is the donation drive month for RealLibertyMedia.com. Yep. We have received one donation so far, and we need more. Uh, we, need, we, need, we need more. I, I have no money to pay for this stuff myself. So, We're in uh, no hurry, but if you could do it in this month, that would be helpful. Well, it has to be in this month because i got to pay the dues in the Okay, fees. yeah, okay. So <laughs> in this correction, month. it has to happen this month. Yeah, because you lose our due. Dude. Yeah, they they that don't happens. give they don't give us any grace period. If, if no, I don't, they don't if I don't pay them in times, the shit shuts down. So yeah, um, we don't want that. Yeah, we don't want that. We no want, one wants that. I we, don't want that. Yeah, so so just go to reallibertybd dot com, press that big red donate button, and send us some of that cashola, and we'll if appreciate. If you could, please, it's a yeah. dollar, five dollars, ten, ten $10, twenty, thirty, fifty. Um, Doesn't even matter the amount. Any amount. That you feel comfortable with. The more, the merrier. Um. <laughs> but any amount, I mean, if you think about it, you know, newspapers, like back in the day, I'm old because I remember there was no internet. Yeah. And we had to rely on newspapers, right? Right, right. And my dad paid, I don't know, we paid 25 cents, I guess, for a paper. Or less than that when I was a kid. But, yeah. you know, that's how we got our information. Right. And now we get our information with this wonderful internet. And it's not free, you know. Like I tell my kids, nothing is free. Well, whatever. We got all these servers to pay for. Right. And, and we have, you know, it does cost money. Even though we do not get paid for doing this, we do these shows voluntarily. Um, we still, Grimner runs a website here, and he run, runs the servers. And it, he pays for month, yearly and monthly fees to do these things. And... You know, it's you know we don't like he said we only ask for money once a year once once a year each February and yeah and That's so um just please donate yeah you know yeah. It, I mean <laughs> that's all I'm saying <laughs> help us out you know yeah, yeah. if you like it you all know, right if if not we you know whatever we'll go away uh, yeah, a, we, anyway yeah. um 
Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's been wonderful, and uh, have a great weekend. Peace. Peace.